This information is of a general nature only and does not take into account your objectives, financial situation or needs. You should consider the product disclosure statement, which you have in your hot little hands, issued by Plantation Capital Limited in deciding whether to acquire an interest in the passive income USA Commercial Property Fund. Past performance is not a guarantee of future performance. No earnings estimates are made. Can you say this for me? Take me to the mine. Take me to the mine while it's still open. No point us going to the mine and the mine's closed. Take me to the mine while it's still open. Now, our guest speaker for tonight, Stu Silva, or Uncle Zally as I like to call him, I have flown him out for the United States, from the United States just for you tonight. And the reason I've done it is because I want him to be able to talk to you about the sorts of deals that he's doing right now and the sorts of opportunities that he sees. Can you please give him a big round of applause? How'd you like to follow that act? Huh? Easy. Why did he bring me out here? Because I've been in the mine for the last two years. I've been in real estate for 32 years, since 1980. And I've had the most fun buying these last two years. It's, I almost feel guilty. It's so easy. Uh, Steve says I should tell you about my credentials. So I'm going to tell you about my credentials. I worked on Wall Street from 1970, back in the good old days, to around 1980. Um, got into real estate because no matter what I learned on Wall Street, and every day I would read three or four papers, I'd read magazines, I'd read news wires. It didn't make any difference. I couldn't compete with the big guys. I couldn't. They had better information, better political contacts, and a hell of a lot more money. How'd you like to try to compete with somebody that's as smart as you, has better information, better political contacts, and a lot more money? It's not easy. I got into real estate because the playing field was much more level. I felt that I had at least the same amount of information as everybody else. I had as much money, and I didn't have any political contacts, and neither did they. I became a CCIM. They bill it. It's a wonderful designation, Certified Commercial Investment Member. Uh, when I did it, I think it was about 15 or 16 years ago, I already owned 10 different pieces of commercial property, and I thought, I probably should learn about it now, now that I own 10. So I went to this class, and they build it as the PhD of real estate. And I thought, man, I got to get me one of them PhDs before I retire. So I got the CCIM. I became a registered real estate appraiser for almost 15 years. And the reason I did that is because I was a licensed auctioneer for about 25 years now. And auctioneers in the United States, it's not as easy as being an auctioneer in Australia. Selling by auction in Australia real estate is a pretty common practice, correct? In fact, I think it's kind of neat. Every weekend, they tell you how many auctions there were, how many properties sold, and what percentage of the, uh, what do they call it, the reserve they got, right? That's a really interesting way of being updated on the real estate market on a week-by-week -week basis. We don't have that in the United States. But I became an auctioneer, um, and I love it. I really do. To me, it's the theater of real estate. It combines two of my loves. I love theater and I love real estate, and auctions are both of them. And when I would do an auction, I've auctioned over 600 properties. At the end of the auction, when I had the investor there who was buying the property, I'd ask him, why'd you buy it? What are you gonna do with it? How are you gonna make money? And you know, after 600 auctions, I probably met thousands of investors like yourselves. I learned a lot from them. And I'm also a licensed real estate broker. Now, right now, my family and I own approximately 850 rental units. I'm circling around a few mobile home parks right now, and I want to get that up to 1,000, and then I'm done. I figure I'm going to hand it over to my children. They can drink it away, whatever they're going to do. But I, but I figured, if you say I left my family 1,000 rental units, I figure I did something useful with my life. 
I've been a full-time investor since 1980. I've seen three recessions and three booms. Now, I know a lot of you are looking at me, and I get this all the time. They go, Zali, do you dye your hair? <laughs> Let me see a show of hands. How many people think I dye my hair? Come on, be honest, all right? Now, I'm going to tell you the truth. I do not dye my hair. I bleach my beard. <laughs> and I do that so that I look older and wiser in your eyes. Underneath that beard, I'm only 23 years old. No, no, no. Now, Steve brought me up here to tell you what I'm doing. I said I've been in the mines. This is what I'm currently doing. These are the kind of returns that I am looking for that when I hear them, the bell goes off and I buy the property. Number one, I'm looking for at least an 11 to 18% yearly return on my money. How many people here would like to get an 11 to 18% positive cash flow return? Right, that was easy. Okay, I'm expecting to get a capital return of two to four. Not two to four percent two to four times, and I'm expecting that in the next five to ten years. And I'm going to tell you more about that. And what kind of properties? Now, I'm going to give you three examples of properties that I bought. In the last, I would say in the last uh, three months, I think I bought seven properties, all right? But I'm just going to give you three examples of properties that I bought in the last two years. This first one I bought before I came to the conference. How many people were at the conference? Steve's conference. I bought this right before I left, literally the day before, a 24-unit motel. Now, if you could buy something like that in Melbourne, what would it cost? How much a unit would it cost to build, you know, 24-unit motel? Do you have motels here? You do have motels. What would it cost? 50,000, 75,000 a unit? 200,000 a unit? 200,000 a unit. Okay, I paid $203,000. I figured the replacement value is about a million, about 50,000 a unit. It's also going to give me approximately a 23% cash flow. I'm figuring around $1,000 a week, $4,000 a month. You average that out, that's going to be around 23% cash on cash. And I expect it should double in the next five to 10 years. Now this next one is, is probably, it's one of my most favorite properties that I've ever bought. Um, it's on a lake, as you can see. I mean, there, is that the, there it is. This is the park right here, and it's also across the street. It's probably got about a kilometer of frontage on a major road. That's a major road between Gainesville and uh, Daytona Beach. It's on this lake right here. It's a, roughly a 500 acre lake. In hectares, that's 200 hectares. And it's also got another little lake here that it was pretty dry when they took this. It hooks up to a chain of lakes. Let me tell you about it. It had 130 mobile homes. Now, I understand Australia is not familiar with the concept of a mobile home. Basically, a mobile home is a, mo is a home that is built in a factory and then put on wheels and rolled out, driven down the road, to a site and then set up more or less permanently, but it could be moved. But it's set up, tied down, leveled, you attach the connections and you can live in it. It had 130 mobile home sites. By the way, it came with 25 free mobile homes. I, I mean, you know what they say, if you live long enough, you'll see everything. And in some cases, things you don't ever want to see again. But that certainly I would. I got 25 free mobile homes. People just walked away from their homes, said, here's the title, goodbye. That's what came with the property. It has 16 cabins. When I bought it, there was a receiver in place. I won't go into that. He told me I should burn down the cabins. They needed so much work. All right, I looked at him and said, what, are you kidding me? These are kind of cute, and they're right on the lake. So I fix them up over the next six months. Those cabins throw off $10,000 a month, every single month. 
It has 16 RV spots. Now, RVs are what you call caravans, all right, where you can pull a, drive it in and connect it up and live there for whatever you want, a day, a month, a year. It also comes with a restaurant. It also came with a store. And it also came with a laundry. Now, my son runs the laundry. Does anybody here have any, do you have pay washers and dryers in Australia? You, you do have them, right? Does anybody own one? Here, does anybody have a, you don't? Oh. Um, you know when somebody has a pay washer and dryer when you go out to eat and they pay in all change, okay? <laughs> and my son runs the laundry, he loves the laundry. And I have no idea how much money the laundry's making, he never tells me. <laughs> and it's on 30 acres of serenity. Now, Steve told me to say the word serenity because it means something to Australians. There's some funny connotation. Would somebody explain what the funny connotation is? It got the laugh, but what's the connotation? Excuse me? And what happened in the movie? Okay, you have to explain it more depth to me later on, okay? <laughs> All right, how much did it cost? I can tell you, I did something that I rarely do. I fell in love with the property in, I believe it was, 2007. And I tried to buy it for two and a half million, and someone outbid me and paid 3.75 million. And then proceeded to go right into the toilet, which was great for me. I bought it in 2010 for $1.1 million. That's roughly a third of what the previous person paid. And it had no net operating income. It had no income at $1.1 million. If I did nothing but what the receiver was doing with the property, I would have made zero money each year, not a nickel. But as a result of what I've learned over 32 years, um, I got the cabins going, I rented the mobiles, I sold the free mobile homes, rented them out. It now throws off 19.27%. I wanted to put 20%, but Steve said, no, no. If you're at one of my presentations, you've got to be perfectly accurate. So it throws off 19.27%. If you figure that out with the income that it throws off, I've literally made a million dollars on the property already. The property is worth $2.1 million, and I bought it for 1.1. One of the things you'll learn about income property is that the value of a property, a commercial property, is directly proportional to the amount of income that it throws off. There's no housing value. And that's a million dollars in capital growth. Now this one, this one was just unbelievable from the beginning to the end. Um, and it came to me. You know, I love when the good deals come to you. You don't have to pick up the phone. You don't have to call a broker. How many people have ever had a deal come to them? Raise your hands. Nobody? Really? Okay. Well, this guy came to me. He's owned the property for 30 years. Came to me and said, I heard you're buying everything in North Fort Myers. I said, that's a lie. I'm just buying some of the properties in North Fort Myers. He said, how'd you like to buy this? I said, what do you want? He said, make me an offer. I said, what do you want? He said, make me an offer. I said, what do you want? He said, make me an offer. I didn't make him an offer. Two weeks later, he calls me up. When are you gonna make me an offer? I said, well, what do you want? <laughs> do I have to do it again? All right. So finally, I said, all right, fine. So I wrote him an offer. It was the worst offer. I thought, he's never gonna take it ever. It involved vendor financing. I was paying him less, well, you'll see what I paid him. I was paying him a lot less than he wanted. I didn't care, okay? I gave him the contracts. He sat in my pickup truck. I like to do business in my pickup truck. It's kind of neat. Has anybody here ever written a contract with somebody in their truck or car? God, you people are sheltered, aren't you? <laughs> I gave him the contracts, and I figured he's going to rip them up and throw them in my face. And I had somebody do that one time. Came to my office, I gave him a contract on his property, he ripped it up, threw it in my face, and walked out. 
I think he wasn't happy with the price. I'm not sure. I think he wasn't. Anyway, this gentleman, John was his name, looked at it, and he said, you want a 30-year mortgage from me at 6% fixed rate? And I said, yep. He said, I'm 67 years old. I don't think I'm going to live until that last mortgage payment, but I think I'm going to live to 87. Can you make the mortgage a 20-year mortgage instead of a 30? I said, you want to change anything else? He said, no. I said, okay. So he changed it to a 20 and I bought the property. It had 58 dwelling units, 35 mobile homes, which you know what they are now, 18 motel units, two duplexes, that's a one unit that has two units in it, and a house. Now, if I were to buy that in Melbourne, what would it cost for, well, you don't have mobile homes, so let's just attach a value of 25,000 to them, right? I imagine, what can you buy for 25,000 in Melbourne? A tent, a tent, a tent to put out under, what, a bicycle, all right? <laughs> Whatever it is, I paid $480,000 for it. I put $80,000 down. He gave me a $400,000 seller mortgage. Vendor, you call it vendor. We call it seller financing at 6%. It didn't make any money the first six months because I ran it the way he did. And then I said, okay, now let's run it our way. And at the end of six months, it threw off $10,000 a month in positive cash flow. Now, I'd like to see you tell me, what kind of return is that? Anybody know? Excuse me? 25%? All right, now let me give you a hint, if I could. If you put $80,000 down on a property, and it gives you $80,000 a year, in positive cash flow, what's the return? And if you put 80,000 down and it gives you 120,000, what's the return? 150%. I learned, uh, I was lucky that when I was like 32 years old and working on Wall Street, I, I went to two guys that had been partners for 30 years and they were the only people I know that could trade the market and make money. They were pure traders. And I, it mystified me what they did. And finally, I asked one of them one day, I said, Nick, how do you do it? How do you know when the market's going to go up and when the market's going to go down? I said, do you read it in the papers? Do you follow an economist? He said, no, I believe in the wisdom of the phone. And he held up a phone. And he said, when the phone rings and buyers looking to buy, it's good time. And when the phone is dead, the market's dead. Now, why did I bring that up? Because my phone is starting to ring again. Not starting, it is ringing again. So I can clearly see that the market is getting better. We're renting things very quickly. We're renting warehouses very quickly. When's the best time to buy? If you've got a market that went down and it's a bell curve, when's the best time to buy? Can you really pick, pick when the bottom is? No, when's the best time to buy? The real pros like to buy when it starts to trend up. And that's what's going on now. How do I know that? The wisdom of the phone. So if you learn nothing else tonight, you can go home and talk about the wisdom of the phone. What does all this mean? The time to do it is now. So. Would I invest in the fund? Steve told me I couldn't invest in the fund because I was an American. Now he says I can as long as the way I found out about the fund was from an Aussie. <laughs> now, believe me, I don't understand that reasoning whatsoever, but I am recommending the fund to investors that I know in the United States because I believe it is going to be a great opportunity run by somebody who's one of the smartest real estate people I know. Maybe he's one of the smartest real estate people you know, Steve McKnight. And he also has integrity. Somehow those don't seem to go to well together, right, in the real estate market. But this, in this particular case, it does. Things in the United States are getting better. 
the heavy lifting is going to be done for you. Steve is going to be buying properties for you, and I will be helping him manage them. And like he's been saying to you, what's the better alternative right now?